In the last video, we talked about how to integrate the Festo Didactic Mech Lab conveyor with our PLC trainer. And at the end of it, I told you to go ahead and wire your buttons, lights, and switch one per the getting started guide. Now, did you actually test that? Because yeah, mine didn't work initially. So make sure you test those and they work. And then also I'm gonna have you add switch four. So previously we wired input zero as our metal part present or the inductive sensor, input one as the part present optical sensor, and then our regular getting started wiring is button one through switch one on input four through input eight and also light one through light four on input zero through input three. I want you to go ahead and add switch four left and right as input nine and 10 also. And no, before you ask in the comments, I will not give you the wiring diagram because part of this is for us to be able to understand how we integrate two components. We have a wiring diagram for ours. Festo has some incredibly outstanding lessons for theirs. But okay, now we gotta think through how do we work all these things out so that we can plan a project. Once you've tested all that, let's open up our global variables and connecting components and let's put our descriptions in. And that actually goes under this alias right here. So digital input zero is gonna be metal part present and I'm gonna put inductive on the end of it just so we can remember what type of sensor it was. Let's widen that out a little bit. And then input one is gonna be part present optical. And then we're gonna go down to input four. This will be our green button, then our yellow button, then our red button, then our blue button, switch, one, switch, four, left, switch, four, right. Then output zero is gonna be our green light, yellow light, red light, blue light, switch, one. No, that's wrong. Well, good. That, well, there you go, guys. Now you know if you can't put an alias in twice, even as I was typing, I'm like, no, that's an input. But no, now this will be our conveyor solenoid. Then we have conveyor run and we have conveyor reverse. And we're going to slowly step through this. I know a lot of you just want to see me drop a metal part here and it goes this way and drop the black part and it goes that way. But there is a ton that we can learn along the way. And instructors, I would stress to you to do the same. In fact, if you go through the Festo manual, they're really good about that part. We're going to start by making it where we press our green button our conveyor runs. We're gonna right click programs, add ladder diagram. And I'm gonna open up probe one and we are gonna bring down a go look for one direct contact and an output energize. And we're gonna simply hit our drop down, and we can start typing green and there's our green button. And over here we can start typing conveyor and there's our conveyor run. And we're gonna go ahead and download this program. Now I'll stick a part onto my conveyor. I press the green button and my part moves. But let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's spin this around and see what actually is happening here. Looking at the back of the trainer, here is the conveyor motor. And if I put a lead on each side of our motor, then when I press my green button, we're getting positive voltage. That is while I have the red lead on the bottom one. Now, since we don't have anything writing to digital output number six, which was our conveyor reverse, we can put a checkbox in that one right now. And now when I press the green button, notice I'm getting negative voltage. How this works is we have our two conveyor relays, the run and the reverse. And both of those are double pole, double throw relays, which means that we have a common and we have a normally closed and we have a normally open. And so we have double. So there's the other set. And I forgot to label it, but this one right here is going to be our run. And this one is going to be our reverse. So whenever we energize this, it's going to close and it's going to apply power to the reverse relay. And it is normally closed, which means normally 
in this case, our minus is going to the top of the motor and our plus is coming around to the bottom of the motor. Now, if I energize the reverse, that's gonna switch it down here and that's gonna make the minus go to the bottom and the positive go to the top. And on a basic DC motor to reverse direction, you do simply reverse polarity. Now next, my finger is gonna get really tired sitting here holding this all day. And the next thing we wanna talk about is a seal in circuit or your basic start stop circuit. And let's go ahead and uncheck output six to put a zero into it and go back over to probe one. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect I do have developer mode, but I know many of you don't. So I'm going to do all my edits just like you would with the free software. And we have a video already on how to do this. But what we want to do is create a seal in or a way of remembering that something's happened. And what we want to remember is that output zero had a one in it. And so this instruction right here goes and looks for a one. And if we bring a branch down and it down, then we can simply go and look for the conveyor run. So that's going to seal it in. We're just going to remember what value it needs to be. And next, we're going to need to put in a stop. And we're going to use the red button for the stop. Now, let's talk about how we would figure this out. Because when you're thinking about those instructions as normally open and normally closed, and you're thinking about these as normally open and normally closed, it can get really confusing. And this is why I use the go look for a one and go look for a zero. So if the input is off, it will have a zero in it. We use go look for a zero. If the input is on, it'll have a one in it. We'll go look for a one. So when I'm not pressing the red button, it has a zero in it. So we want to go look for a zero. Bring that down. And we're gonna put the red button in. And let's go ahead and download that. And now I will put my part back on. I press my green button. I let off my green button. Press my red button and it stops. So that gets our conveyor started. Now let's talk about the sorter. First, let's just talk about how it works. So if I put it here, my sorter is up right now. I hit my green button and it's simply gonna run off the end here. Now. If we go into our Connected Components Workbench program and go back to our variables and we check the conveyor solenoid, then that drops us down. And now when we press our green button, it's gonna go this direction. So now we want to try to sort based on this inductive sensor. Remember from the previous video, inductive means that it can see the metallic parts but it won't see these. And we're gonna do this the way I feel everybody starts off trying to do this. So we're gonna go into our program, disconnect, and bring down a new rung. And we're gonna bring a go look for a one down and go find the metal part present and bring an output energized down. And let's find our conveyor solenoid and go ahead and download that. And now we'll put our metal part on. We press our green button. It sees it, drops down, comes right back up and still falls off of the end. So we need to remember that we've seen the sensor and put it to some type of time. Now we're gonna step through this. It's gonna take us a couple times. So first, let's see if we can relate the seal in that we just learned in the start stop to what we need to do down here. Let's go back offline and let's bring a branch around this and we'll bring a go look for a one. And then in this case, usually it is, you're wanting to remember the thing that you're turning on here. Now, now we're in this that I say this is gonna work perfectly. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put conveyor solenoid here and we're gonna download that. And now we'll put our part on again. We press the green button. It sees the sensor, drops down, comes on in, and the next issue is yes, we know it's going to stay down forever. So what we want to do is we want to make it stay down for a certain amount of time and then stop staying down or the same as our stop button. So let's get our timer in there next. 
And then we're going to make a branch on this output side. So just bring a branch over around this conveyor solenoid output. And we're going to bring down an instruction block and double click on it and go find a TON. That is our timer on delay. And actually, let's double click back on this because we should name this something. This does default to TON underscore one, but that doesn't really tell us a lot about it. So I want to name this our solenoid off delay. And then let's put in a preset time, but let's make it a variable. That way we can change it. And we're going to call this our solenoid down preset. And it defaults to the right data type of time. So we'll put that in. And then temporarily, we're going to take this back out, the front branch, so we can understand how this timer works and what we can use on it. So go ahead and download this. Now, when I put the metal part in front of the sensor, our solenoid goes down and we're immediately getting the qubit. And the reason we're immediately getting the qubit is our timer preset is at zero. So let's double click on it. And I know this is a long amount of time, but just so we can understand the timer, let's make it T number 10S. And that will be a 10 second timer. And mainly we're gonna focus on this qubit right here is when I bring it in front of it now, our preset is 10, but our elapsed time is not 10 yet. So our Q has a zero in it. And when we get to 10, our Q goes to a one. So we have to think about when do we want this to run? And we want it to run when this Q is a zero. So coincidentally, we're gonna end up with the exact same layout as we did on this conveyor run. So we'll put our seal in back in, and then we're gonna put a go look for a zero for the solenoid off delay. And yes, I did spell delay D-E-L-E-Y, just so that nobody else has to put it in the comments. Go offline, we'll bring a branch down, and we'll put our seal in back in for our conveyor solenoid. And we'll bring a go look for a zero down for solenoid. And we want the off delay. Now, notice it didn't give us a drop down here. And I really wish it would do a little bit better at this, but you got to know to put a period at the end of it. And that's going to give you all the options for a timer. And we're going to select the queue. And also we have a video on exactly what all those bits do and what the various timers do. So go and hit the subscribe button and you can go find those lessons. But let's go ahead and download this. Now we'll put our part at the front of it. We'll hit our green button. And it goes down and it immediately goes back up. And let's go ahead and talk about this because this is an issue, especially when you have a lot of values and set points that you need to change. And we're doing these program changes offline and downloading is we're losing these values each time. So if we go in and we look at our program now, our preset is back at zero. Let's talk about how to fix that. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to put it back at T number 10S. And then let's disconnect. All right, now before, when we go to download it, right now, if we go and look at the solenoid preset, its project initial values are zero. What we can do is we can right click the Micro 850 and we can upload, and we're gonna upload with logical values. This is gonna pull the actual values that are in it right now out. And now if we disconnect, and we go back into our program and double click on solenoid preset, we have our project value here. So even though we haven't made any changes, let's go ahead and download it again. And this time we have our 10 seconds in it. And if we put our metal part onto the front of it, we press our green button, it comes down, senses it, it's gonna hold down, but after 10 seconds, it pops back up. All right, next, we have our basic start stop circuit here, but we have this sensor on the front of it that we really want to run this off of. So let's do the exact same seal in that we did with this one for this front sensor. Sometimes I'm sitting here editing a video and I look at it and I'm like, wow, I didn't mean to do that. But we have a learning opportunity here. And I do want you to continue through this video just as it is, 
But notice I'm getting ready to add rung three to control our conveyor run when we already have rung one controlling it. And this is called a duplicate destructive output. And we're going to use this to learn about them. And this probably just turned into the best lesson you can have as far as understanding how PLCs work. Let's go offline and let's bring down a new rung. And we're going to bring a go look for a one down. And this time we are going to be looking for our part present optical sensor that's on the front of the conveyor. And this is going to turn on our conveyor run. And we want a branch around this side. And we're going to use the same seal and we're going to go look for a one at the conveyor run to keep it going. And then we're gonna bring a branch around our output and bring down an instruction block. Double click on it and we want a TON. And in this case, I am gonna name this one conveyor runtime. And we're gonna go ahead and make a preset for it also. So conveyor run preset. And we're gonna bring a go look for a zero down. And we're going to find our conveyor run time. And at the end of it, we're going to put a dot and we want that queue again. And let's go ahead and download this one. We do need a time in on this one. So now we can start tweaking some times, but let's make sure they work first. So I'm just going to put the same 10 seconds on this one. And I will put my metallic part here. And it does take off right away. Senses it, drops down. And obviously we have a lot of extra solenoid time. Go ahead and tweak your values in so that you put a metal part on, comes down, and it goes that way and shuts off. But also don't forget to check your plastic part afterwards and make sure that your conveyor time will actually let it run all the way off the end. Now we have what may be my favorite lesson as far as teaching people how to program PLCs as I have accidentally put a duplicate destruct a bit in, and we're going to spend some time on that. So once you got your times tweaked in, click here to follow me over there.